Hey, so I suppose I just wanted to come on and say thank you. Thank you for all my following and the people that choose to listen to me go on and on and on. You know, these words, and I have a lot of people in the comments say it's a talent, it's a gift, but it's something I never knew that I had within me. I'm 40. I'm 41 this year and my whole life has been et up with the aftermath of abuse, that anger, that resentment, that overthinking, that catastrophizing. Not being able to live in the now because I was constantly in my past, in my feels, sat in my emotions, this pit of triggers and trauma, which made me feel safe. I know, make it make sense, but you see, the happy, the actual safe, I couldn't enjoy that because life had taught me when I was happy or I had a glimmer, the bad would come and haunt me. And that's, that, that is, I suppose, the aftermath, constantly in fear, constantly protecting yourself from, from the fear that's near. Uh, and health anxiety was a massive thing for me, waiting for the bad to come. Where is it? On high alert hypervigilance at all time and it got to a point for me where simply visuals started to come into play you know in in the reality is is it that crazy like i convinced myself when that was happening when i grew up in a home where bad stuff would happen most days <laughs> you know this is a reality it's natural that i would fear that in my now safe home when it was my reality in my not so safe home but it all got too much i was waking up in a void flatlined didn't want to speak short tempered just taken back to a place of self-indulgence and self-pity for this once part of my story walking up the road side on the path head on traffic coming on on the road next to me envisaging those cars smashing into me and to the point where i'm laying on the floor the paramedic looking over me then i'm in hospital then my children's sadness walking in town in my own world, lost in my head, trying to do life, trying to carry on. Someone's walking past. What if they do something to me? That story growing before I know it, they've got a weapon. Then I feel the moments where I envisage them doing that to me. But not only that, the craziest feeling when you mentally create this story in your head and your body's that anxious. I felt that adrenaline rush and surge physically in my body. Can you imagine how confusing that is? The constantly feeling judged. No matter what words come out of my mouth, I would go away and judge myself. I became the abuser, <laughs> the abuser that once was in my story. I was abusing myself with the tools that he gave to me, that fear. It was in my afterlife, afterlife, aftermath. It was in my current day and I could not make it go away. No matter how hard I tried, it was almost easier to wrap this comfort blanket of safety, of pain and stay in that place. But that's what I deserved you know and it's all of this and and throughout my journey and going to the doctors ptsd PC, what what does that mean <laughs> what and i suppose by doing what i do in speaking openly one it's me taking ownership of my story and my pain it's not me being a victim it's me taking control it's me not caring it's me dragging it all out there on full display it's very niche but is it is it really that niche because i started my journey on social media on the other platform and before i knew it other survivors were relating to me and this is my theory because i'm not a doctor 
I'm 41 years old and I've just understood that I can write and connect in a way because I've been locked away all this time. You are learning with me real time. Before I knew it, other survivors were connecting to me just like I connected to Johnny Depp when I see a story on my TV of domestic abuse and it being spoken about for the first time. But in that, in that moment of watching this Johnny Depp Amber her court case, people speaking about domestic abuse and what goes on behind closed doors, I started to understand very quickly by watching him, it was validating my own pain. I was allowing that connection in. I was allowing myself to feel that because I had spent so long, although I was sat in the aftermath, I didn't understand these bad days that I'd wake up under. I didn't understand these triggers around me. And um, I understood very quickly when the Johnny Depp Amber Heard court case, thank God he got justice. I didn't want that to end. I wanted to show more in the same way by sharing more of my own. And it was like the gift that kept on giving, you know? We could finish each other's sentences for the first time ever. People were talking about abuse everywhere I looked. Their stories entwined, connecting. One of a kind, many of a kind. The same products of the same narcissist handbook we have become. And I suppose for me it was about accepting my story, understanding it, using the tools of balance, placing it away from you. So you could see past this black cloud because actually we're very intuitive people. We see pain, we see bad. <laughs> we also can appreciate good because we've spent so long in the bad. That's my cat. <laughs> and, and I suppose it's about unpicking all the damage together is about sharing for me. And I suppose I had a little bit of experience in this when we went in the woman's refuge this home with all these women. For the first time ever, I had seen children who had been living the same life as me and it felt healing. So although my stuff is very triggering, there are so many people like I once was sat in the aftermath, sat in this place. And if me by me sharing my story, I can help them see and connect and understand that they deserve more. It's about learning that we can love ourselves, that we can grow bigger than what our story was. It's a part of us, but it doesn't define us. We don't need to be scared in the now. Nine times out of 10, when that overthinking starts to commence, it's just a trigger, in my opinion. It's just a moment where you've been taken back, where you don't feel you're good enough, where you fear something bad's gonna come. And if it's not there, we start to make it happen anyway in our heads. And it's about learning the tools of understanding, balance, acceptance, ownership, being prepared, knowing our story, knowing what affects us so we can avoid it but also work on it when we feel able to. Then that way we can start to, when we wake up and we're flatlined and we've got nothing to say, we use that overthinking. We use that over analyst in catastrophizing to target what has happened in the previous days. What could have sent me this way? Because this isn't me. This isn't a fear. This is a trigger because of my life I once lived, which I no longer live. And I need to work this out and connect a dot to give me peace in myself. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> to share that with you all. I told you on and on and on.